Good morning. Good morning. Really honored to be here. It's really 20 years is a, a long time, but it's really a short in the scheme of things, you know, as if we've been trying at this still and still not getting where we really wanted to be. My presentation is on the impact of art on the Jamaican psyche. Now, we can simply define art as a form of communication. It's the expression or application of the broad range of human creative skills and imagination in such forms as, you know, painting, sculpture, music, literature, dance. And it produced works primarily for their beauty or emotional power, but sometimes just to make a statement to your society. So basically we can say art communicates, but it does so intellectually, it does so socially, but most of all viscerally. Let me give an example. When Tess and Chin and Adam Levine performed Let It Be, after they went, Adam went to the solo, and they came back from the bridge now regimatically. I got goosebumps. Just by me saying it now, I have goosebumps. That is my, my body just tell me, say it done. Right? That's the visceral. Christine Hewitt, the late Christine Hewitt, she and I were at a conference uh, at a launch in some many years ago in Turks and Caicos, and there was an imitation reggae band trying to play reggae. And Christine did it in her own imitable way, and I'll have to edit this a little bit to say, she tell her bass player that the purpose of the, the bass, and I'm being technical now, is to make a woman's labia majora, minora, and mons pubis vibrate. <laughs> now, you, you can contract it. That's the purpose of the bass. <laughs> if the bass not doing that, him not playing the bass properly. And the man there was not playing the bass properly. All right? Dominique Brown, good friend of mine, I uh, saw so a Friday night when downstairs Jamaica's greatest rock band was playing. And by the second, son, Dominic jumped in the air and says, All panties wet! Oh that was the visceral response to the music. Alright, so understand where we're going, folks. The real question is though, how does communication then impact on our feelings and thoughts and behavior? Now, given the fact that this is International Reggae Day, let's just limit the art that we're talking about now to say it's a poetry and music, huh? words and music. Do you remember an inn, Miranda? Do you remember an inn? How far did that take you back? Anybody? That takes you back to Central Branch Primary. And you, sit, you, know, you learn to recite those things and you know, to round up your mouth and say it nice and properly. But then I heard some years ago, Paul Keen Dawes says that it was Miss Lou that broke him out. The first time he heard Louise Bennett speak in Jamaican, it freed him. Prior to that, he was an advertising executive trying to use standard English to communicate. And that's what he actually learned to speak in his own voice, hearing Miss Lou actually do it. Decades later, some of these things that we learned as children still stand in our mind. One of the reasons is because some aspect of that poem resonates with you at an emotional level. You learn these things early. Now, poetry has displayed over time and across cultures. It helps uh, the human heart to communicate. It helps us to say things that sometimes your mouth doesn't know how to say, it, but your heart knows how to say it. And poetry works in that way. We as human beings, we need to be inspired. We need meaning. So poetry allows us to experience strong spiritual connections to things around us, to people around us, and to the past. So words do that for us. The nature of poetry is such that it can exalt, uplift, inspire whatever and whomever it touches. As one of the oldest art forms, poetry has successfully looped its way through the triumphs and tragedies of our civilization, connecting various strands of humanity from one generation to another. Poetry can help us make sense of otherwise meaningless experience. Poetry enlightens us and gives us insight into our own existence. It allows us to bring order and meaning to what are otherwise constructs as random and mysterious experience. The power of words. Now, music goes a little further. Music influences us in many ways because music has the ability to hijack the brain systems built for other purposes. 
such as language, emotion, and movement. Music offers a novel way of helping us to communicate. It communicates via emotions rather than just meaning. For example, Mali got me through graduate school. I tell time with Mali music. So every year a new Mali album came out, I put it on the turntable and I play one song before I go to class in the morning. And that got me through the day, right? So we can tell time where music does that to us. Research shows us that what we feel when we hear a piece of music is remarkably similar to what everybody else in the room is experiencing. Is that there's a collective experience. Everyone feels that at the same time because the music does that. Do you understand that the auditory system of the fetus is fully functional by about 20 weeks after conception? So we know that music exposure in the final trimester is preferred when measured one year later. The kind of music that the fetus experience in the womb, that is what the child actually loves and feels because the child was hearing it from before it was born. Prenatal music experience is encoded in memory and can be assessed in the absence of language or explicit awareness of memory. Songs facilitate emotional bonding and even physical interaction such as marching or dancing together and thus helps us cement ties that underlie the formation of human society. So music is an integral part. It provides a soundtrack for life. Tunes may work to our benefits at an individual level, manipulating mood and even human psychology more efficiently than words can. You want to create a mood, you put on the kind of music that facilitates it. And it works. What you've been experiencing over the past couple of years is what I consider a devolution in Jamaican music. What was the music of Jamaica that captured the imagination of the world in the 70s? It was music that dealt with the body, mind, and spirit. We used to have something way back in Jamaica, something called NFAP, not fit for airplay. And persons would make decisions that certain songs do not connote the kind of feelings and thought. We saw a period where our music shift from the mind and the soul and the spirit to the groin. Sex and violence became the dominant theme of our music. Has it impacted our society? In 1995, the British Parental Advisory label, following the lead taken by America a decade earlier in response to a campaign by parents, the religious lobby and politicians, they made a decision in terms of that music must be labeled because of the impact that music has on society. And interesting that all our artists in Jamaica obey these labels in terms of what they put on their songs when they're released abroad. All obey them. In 1985, the RIA reached an agreement with the National Parentage Association of America and the agreement specified that music released which contained explicit lyrics including explicit depiction of violence and sex be identified so parents can make intelligent listening choices for their children. Label the music so parents can say, listen, yes, I want my child to listen to that. There's a wonderful quote from the head of the RIA. It says that all music is not always appropriate for all ages. The music industry takes seriously its responsibility to help parents determine what is and is not appropriate for their children. That's why the record companies have created Parental Advisory Label. This label is a tool to help parents make the choice about when and whether their children should be able to listen to a particular recording. So the understanding of the power of music and what it connotes. What are we doing now in Jamaica? We used to have something called program directors in radio stations when we had two radio stations. Now we have 29 radio stations in Jamaica and countless online options. But I doubt we have this anymore. There's a saying that you must give the people what they want. But then there are those of us who suggest that you've got to give the people what they need. A long time ago, the people were asked, you want Jesus or Barabbas? And they loudly said, give us Barabbas. And they were asked again, and they acclaimed, give us Barabbas. You want culture or slackness? 
give us the slackness. And they'll say so again and again. Some years ago, we had a discussion with a number of the music practitioners and the media houses. And I remember Slide on Bar talking about in the early phase of his career that after he'd be involved in the creation of a record, he'd go home and sit by the radio, sometimes for days, to hear if the song is played. Because it was played on the radio. That's the affirmation, that it was good. I think we have seen the reverse now. I think we have seen the reverse now. When are we going to take responsibility for our behaviors? I find an interesting phenomenon takes place now in Jamaica in terms of the music and the impact on culture. The gospel artist, when he's asked about his music, why do you sing the songs you do? He says that I'm trying to convert people, I'm trying to win souls for Christ. The cultural artist, when asked about his music, he says, I am trying to transform the world to be a better place. Should not the artist who the picture of music is about violence and degrading sex say the same thing? I am trying to create a world built around these elements. I want those who believe that any song played in primetime radio, an eight-year-old should be able to sing the lyrics in front of their parents boldly. And Granny said, what a wonderful way you can sing that nice. We have gone way past that now in Jamaica. We can invade reality, folks, but we can't evade the consequences of evading reality. Art is communication. And the impact on our psyche is that it transforms behavior. Everything you metabolize transforms you. And we metabolize things by eating, by viewing, by listening. So that the concept behind the theme of the day, you reap what we sow, we can see it quite <coughs> evident in terms of where we are now as a people. So if we're to take this to the next level, then we must understand that the law of karma is real and it works. We can transform Jamaica and in fact the world via the kind of music that we present. That's the role of what the art is able to do. Thank you very much.